everyone, what is going on? Steve Rosenberg here, Investing with Purpose. I'm here today with my good friend, Matt Trenchard with Senate House Buyers. We are in Channel View, Texas, which is just to the east of Houston. We're at a house, Matt's got, Matt, tell us about this situation. Yeah, sure, so we've got this 1950 year built house. It's a three bedroom, one bath. It's a little over a thousand square feet, one car attached garage. Um, it, the numbers on it, it's probably worth 140 once it's fixed up. So you're after repair value, your ARV is 140. Okay. It would rent for 1200 bucks a month and it's gonna need some work. A little bit of the backstory, the seller had this house for her father. He recently passed away and she doesn't have use for the house anymore. It needs work, she didn't wanna deal with it. And so she sold it to us. So why don't we go ahead and go inside and check it out. All right, before we do, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. We're gonna go inside, we're gonna check this out, and let's see what we're working on. Let's do it. Let's see what we got, my man. Welcome. You moving in here or something? Hey, they came through and what we tell them is take whatever it is they want to keep and leave the rest. So if you so, want a calculator, you can have it. Nice. <laughs> so, well, technically not yet. It closes on Friday. So, okay. All right. We got a couple days. And you got some books here? Oh, there's nice. plenty of books in this place. All right. Well, I mean, looking at the property, it's, uh, you know, it's not bad. I mean, it doesn't look like it's majorly wrong, anything majorly wrong with it. I mean, you got some foundation work you got to do, but then other than that, you're really just going to be hitting the cosmetics in this place, right? Yeah, you got the hardwoods. Hard original hardwood. You might be able to get away with refinishing these, um, which would be nice. Keep that touch. There's not, they're not really scuffed up. Yeah, and, uh, you know, obviously paint, some sheet rock so work. And just out of the gate, obviously, what are you looking at to trash this house out? And, and like cost-wise? Yeah. Oh, to clean it out? I, Probably spend seven, eight hundred bucks. Okay. Yeah. Dumpsters. We'll grab some. Get a, get a, just get a dumpster and get a couple guys for yeah. a day, and they'll be able to knock that it's out. It's not a big house, so no. Let's see. So we got let's go check it out. All right. All right. So my first question is: Is who actually replaces the kitty litter in here? This the, the, the guy living here was. He had like it was like he was the neighborhood. You know, you heard of the cat lady. He yeah. was like the cat guy, right? Okay. So he had the neighborhood cats. Obviously, we're gonna do everything in this kitchen, right? Yeah. Light fixtures, floors, appliances, countertops, cabinets, the whole nine. This thing needs to be redone from top to bottom. Okay. Um, which makes it easy. You don't have to worry about measuring anything out. You just come in, rip everything out, and start over. Okay, so regarding what you're gonna spend on this, what do you think this is gonna cost? In the kitchen, you, this is probably a $6,000 kitchen to rip okay. everything. So, All right. Yeah. And that's, uh, that's pretty conservative numbers. Yeah. Okay, yeah, cool. All right, let's see what else we got. Cool. All right, so let's check out the bedrooms in the the one bathroom that we've got here. Okay, so master, that is uh, style houses. Okay. I don't really know if they have a master or not. So well, let's pick one. All right, we'll check this one out. This guy did a lot of reading, huh? Books everywhere. So if you'd like to, uh, I'm kind of full. In our wholesale library, I'm, I'm an audible kind of guy, so I think check I'll stick it out here. We got some good ones over here. The Secret History of the CIA. Yeah, he did, right. did Lee Child. Yeah, he's into that. So, uh, look, standard bedroom. It's yeah. a small bedroom. The, again, the wood floors are in pretty good shape. You could probably resurface those. Paint, light fixture, and a little bit of trim, and you're probably done in here. So, and I, you know, I gotta say, so far from what I've seen, this is a quick trash out. This is not a big. No, we have I mean, this, this is pretty quick and easy. Not at all. Not at all. Okay. So, let's see what right. else we got. Let's check it out. All right, let's check out the uh, bathroom here. So we'll squeeze in. It's a small house, so small bathroom. Which is very typical for these types of properties. Especially this age. This age, right? So yeah. are these a bunch of razors for your bald head. I could use that, yeah. yes. Um, sure. Oh, wow, there are a lot of razors. Yeah. Here. Um, okay, so what would you hear? Is this again another full? I mean, the bathroom yeah. actually looks pretty nice, I gotta say. It's in decent shape. It would depend on what you want to do with it in here. Um, I'd probably, since it's so small, the redo is not going to be that big of a cost. I would probably just tear everything out and start fresh. Now, let me ask you this. Would you consider pushing this out a little bit and making it a bigger bathroom? Not at this price point, no. Okay. Uh, because once you start adding square footage, the cost goes up significantly. Okay. It's gonna be a lot harder to recoup that at this price point. So on a basic make rating here, what are we looking at to do? If I, if I gutted this bathroom and did everything, it'd be about four grand. Okay. So that's new tile surrounds, new tub, new floors, new vanities, new- All in your 4K. Yeah. Okay, yeah, great. All right, well, I'll tell you what, let's go look at the rest of the house. Cool. Okay, let's see. We got two bedrooms here. I say we go right. Let's just see what <laughs> okay. we got in here, basically. 
Um, again, standard bedroom. It's yeah. just, just like the other one in the other room, right? You resurface the floors, new light fixture, paint, touch up the sheetrock. Would, would you, you keep that? Go. No. Okay, fair no. enough. You I would either. That was yeah. a test. Nice, right. little, nice little baseball glove. That is nice. So Now, I noticed that there are central vents for heat and AC, mm -hmm. but I also noticed window units, which I yeah. know is common. There, There is. A lot of times what people do, especially here in Houston, when it gets so hot, you get these older homes, they're not well they're not very well insulated, is they'll add an AC unit, a window unit, to a room. It's usually where the person sleeps. Sure, so that they can help cooler. keep it cool down. They do that in lieu of replacing the AC. That's all because of the cost, so. All right, let's go uh, check out the other one. Cool. So I'd have to say, if we did have a master, this would probably be this the master. This would probably be the master. It's got a bigger closet. It's got an extra foot, so it's, you know. Oh, is that, it does, huh? Yeah, it's a little bit bigger. It's okay. a little bit bigger. But um, again, just like the other bedrooms in this house, this is a very straightforward rehab. Pull everything out, redo the floors, paint. You got your window unit. I would get the AC replaced, get that working, and get the window units out. Yeah. Um, and then you're off to the races, man. All right, Matt. Um, now let's give me a breakdown. Okay. Uh, from start to finish, what did you buy it for? What are the numbers? And let's run through those. Okay. So we bought this house for sixty-five thousand. Um, so if we go through the whole budget, if you remember, we're about six grand in the kitchen. We're about four grand in the bathroom. Okay. So that's ten. We're about probably, I'd say five grand on everything else, the bedrooms, the living room, all that kind of stuff. You got to trash out. We've got, and that, that's in that that's five inclusive. grand, yep. Okay. And so then I would put a new AC unit in and then I would touch up the foundation. So that's going to bring us up probably a hair under the 25,000 mark, which is what we budgeted, which gives us about two to three grand in kind of miscellaneous stuff that always tends to pop up okay. uh, when you start working on these old houses like this. Right. So we're right about 25 grand. Okay. In total budget. Total in. And then yep. what is the ARV for this property? ARV on this one is 140 okay. and it would rent for about 1200 bucks. Okay. So what would you estimate if you went and sold this? Are you thinking this will be an end buyer or is this going to go to an investor? If we sold it for 140, it would be an end buyer, end user and owner occupant who's going to live in the house. Okay. But what is the plan? What is, what is your plan on this property? So we actually wholesale this property okay. to another investor who's going to end up doing the work and they are going to end up renting the property out. Okay, so this will end up being a rental eventually. Correct. Well, we've got some numbers. Let's take a look outside and let's see what we're looking at on the exterior of the property. It looks like it's a pretty big yard. Yes. So I'd like to see what that looks like and let's take a look at the exterior and see if there's anything that catches our eye that may be a red flag. Cool. All right, let's go outside. AC is on this side? On this side, yeah. Okay. Let's go check it out. Okay, so when you're looking at the ACs, a lot of times you do kind of like a visual inspection. Does it look good? Does it rust it up? Does it look bad? So, and also you're not gonna be able to see it on the camera, but there's a sticker on every AC unit and you can get the serial number, sometimes the manufacturer date, which tells you the age of the particular unit is on there. It happens to be on this one. This was built, manufactured in 06. So it's probably installed in 2006 or 2007. So it's okay. about 12, 13 years old. I gotta say, it actually looks pretty good though. I mean, right. I'm, there's no rust or anything that I'm seeing that's a red flag to me. So my my personal investing philosophy, rule of thumb, is my major mechanicals, if I'm past the 50% uh, useful life, I budget to replace it when I buy the house. Oh, that okay. doesn't mean I'm going to replace it right off the bat, especially if it's a rental property. If it's still working and still kicking and still cooling down the house, I'm gonna keep it, but then I already have a built-in budget for it down the road when it does go out. Okay, that makes sense. I like that. Yep. So that's a good. That's a good tip uh, for that. The fifty percent rule. I like yep. that. Yep. Okay. All Why right. don't we check out? We got to go around the other side. We can get to the backyard. I'm not jumping that fence. Oh, come on. You know, looking at this backyard, the way I look at this, you can almost put another unit on here. I don't know what the zoning is, obviously, for it, but yeah. I mean, you, you could put an ADU on here, or you can put something. But I mean, you definitely have the space for it. It's about 11,000 and some chain square foot lot, so. Is this common for this area? Yes, for this area it is. Uh, as you get closer into town, it's a lot harder to find, you know, a lot this big, but uh, it's definitely common here. So you've got a huge backyard. So especially if you're selling or renting to Families. someone with a family yeah. with a three bedroom, you got, I mean, there's an old playpen or play set back here. I'll go down the slide. You will? Yeah. All right, first tell me about the roof. What are we looking at here? Okay, so the roof, you got uh, a flat shingle. So this one is definitely gonna be working towards the end of its life. Okay. It's still okay right now. It doesn't look bad. It doesn't look bad. And so maybe that five grand we budgeted for the AC, we could probably get a roof on this place. Would you double shingle this? 
the reason I don't like doing that is whenever you put a second layer of shingles on top of an old layer, you actually reduce the useful life of that shingle significantly. Okay. So if you put a 30 year shingle on top of this, it's no longer 30 years, it's 20 or 25 years. Got it. Because it wears out, it's not, it's not installed properly that way. So the cost to do, to rip off the old shingles is really not that much. Don't, don't step over dollars to pick up pennies. Yeah, makes sense. You know? Okay, so. cool. And the, I gotta say the, the exterior siding looks pretty good too. I don't see anything. Yeah, I would hit it with a quick power wash. That'd be about it. Yeah, so. it looks pretty good. So all in all, this is a pretty good property. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, cool. All right, you ready? All right, I'll give you a boost. Yeah, it is a bad idea. That's why we want you to do it. Okay. They don't pay me enough for this. We're not paying you at all for the record. Are you gonna get a running start or are you just gonna start? Running from... start. Yeah. All, right. all right. All right. We should put some water on this line. So for all my fans. There you have it, folks. Hey, everyone. So we just finished walking this property. Again, I uh, I gotta say, Matt, this is a good deal. I like this property. I, I don't see any red flags. I don't see any major issues. Give us a final breakdown of this property. You know, how'd you get it? Where'd you find it? And, yeah. and kind of walk us through the story. So the beautiful thing about this one is this came from a personal referral. So for all the people out there who are just getting started, let everybody know what you do. Like tell them the problems you solve. Tell them what you do every day. And so it was a friend of mine. It was actually his girlfriend who owns a house. Okay. He knew I bought houses that needed work. He knew that I made the process easy. And he's like, hey, you need to come check out my girlfriend's house. And so that's exactly how we got it. Um, she was super happy with the process. It's been very smooth. It's so important to let people know, not that you just buy houses, but that you solve problems. Yes. And that you're there to help people out of situations because you help them and now you were able to do yeah. a deal and this worked out for everyone involved. Yep, and one quick tip on that. Every time we go and talk to a homeowner, we are very, very clear to explain to them, listen, you could get more money if Absolutely. you go a different road. Yeah. If you want to deal with showings, if you want to deal with the time, if you want to deal with cleaning this place up, you absolutely every time will get more money. Right. Because I don't, I'm not trying to sell ice to Eskimos, yes. right? They don't have a need for ice. Yeah. So if the client doesn't have a need to sell their house fast, don't try to talk them into it. But as soon as you know you're in the right house, talking to the right person, when you tell them that and they're like, no, 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 no. I don't want to deal with that. I want this thing gone, which is exactly what happened. A little bit of breakdown. Like I said, we bought the house for 65,000. We think it needs about 25 grand worth of work to get it up to really top of the market condition. Okay. It would rent for 1200 bucks and it would sell for 140 grand. That's, so, a, that's a slamming deal. It's and a great deal. All right, everyone, so that's it. That's a wrap for this property. Thanks again for watching. Please make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. Every week, we're gonna be dropping new videos where me and Matt are gonna be walking properties, giving you our insight, and helping you become better investors. We will see you guys next week at a new property. Bye-bye. See you then, guys.